Danny Segura with MMAfighting.com. I'm here with Scott Coker, Bellator president. Uh, Scott, a lot to talk about. Um, let's just start off with, with the bigger news. Bellator signed a TV deal with, with Sky Sports one year. Now you guys can broadcast live in, in the UK. Um, how important is that deal to the company and, and how long have you guys been after this? You know, uh, we've been looking for a broadcast partner, I would say for the last 18 months and uh, talked to many different outlets and, um, you know, when this opportunity came on board, we jumped because we know Sky Sports and the magnitude of what it means for Sky Sports to get into the MMA business. Um, and that's a statement by itself as to how far MMA has come. And, you know, they haven't aired it, I, w I want to say, for like something like 13, 14 years. And to have Bellator on there being live, and not just the fights that are here that will air, you know, like this fight will air early in the morning there, but like the fight from Ireland will go on, I think, at 9 o'clock prime time on Sky Sports. And I think that the, the fights that we do on uh, Channel 5, which will be the European series, uh, like, for instance, the fight that's happening in Birmingham on May 4th, will air uh, in a repeat on Sky Sports that, that night. So if the fight's over midnight, I think they're going to air it at midnight to, to 2 in the morning. So we're going to get tremendous exposure out there. It's great for the sport. It's great for the brand. It's great for our fighters. It's good for sponsorship. It's, it's just a great piece of business for us. Yeah. And, um, you know, in UK, obviously, it's very big. But to the American audience that perhaps doesn't really aren't too familiar with Sky Sports, can you just explain how big the platform is over there? I mean, as far as sports, it's the biggest, you know. And uh, probably about Premier League, I believe that, um, like, uh, I, th I believe that, uh, you know, every, every major sport is on. Like the, the big boxing fights happen on Sky Sports. I think they have WWE on Sky Sports. I think they have 10 different channels. And, you know, this is the first time they've dabbled in back or gone back into the MMA space with a big commitment like this, having 22 fights uh, plus our European fights. So you're talking about 28 fights that will go live uh, in the UK, which, you know, we've been getting a lot of, you know, uh, you know, some some anti-love here on, hey, how come you guys aren't airing live in, the, in Ireland and now, so Ireland's covered now, the UK is covered. I mean, we completely covered with one big shot. And you know what, I I, uh, I was uh, telling, um, you know, one of our, my colleagues, I said, you know, what feels great about it is that um, all the people that were bashing us for the last two and a half years about not being live in the UK are now giving us tons of praise and love and because it's such a big platform and everybody has it over there. So it's, it's fantastic. Channel 5 is on every every television channel, or you know, it's available in every every home in in the UK, um, and Sky Sports is available uh, on every cable home. So it's a uh, it's a great platform for us, and we're really excited. And to start off with MVP versus Daily, that that's that's going to be a great benchmark, and I think it's going to do great numbers for an early morning slot. Yeah, um, I want to get to that in a second, but is is it sort of nice to sort of silence the critics? Like, look, we're on Sky Sports now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, for two and a half years, you know, we, we were getting bashed and then, you know, we had the Peppa Pig incident and we tried to do the thing on Channel 5 or try to broadcast on Channel 5. But this is a live sport, so sometimes it runs over and things happen and it's just, you know, it's, it's unpredictable. But um, I think, think about it, on Sky Sports, they understand sports and they understand the nuances of, of being in the sports sporting business. And think about all the support program we can get you know, from, from Sky Sports, and, uh, and they've been a great partner so far. It's only been, you know, a week and a half or two weeks, but they've been a great partner, and uh, we're going to do our part, and we're going to put some great fights on, and we're going to go out there and, and promote it properly, and, uh, you know, we'll probably bring some, bring some more fights there just for Sky Sports in the future. Nice. Um, and it seems that, you know, Paul Daly versus MVP is probably the biggest fight you can put, um, you know, within the UK scene at this moment. Um, did you guys wait for that fight to, to, to kick off this deal or did that just happen naturally? No, that was an organic uh, process because this fight was already in the books for months because of the tournament and everything. So this fight's been in the books and we're going to do it here. And um, it just happened that this thing fell you know, uh, fell, you know, fell together, yeah. got, you know, got pulled together at the last minute to, to launch this fight uh, coming this Saturday. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a timing issue. And, uh, you know, I got to knock on wood. It was a, it's a, it was a, a great find and, and a big hit for us. And, and it's great for the company. It's, uh, we're really excited. What do you think this deal is going to do to the company and, 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 yeah, just in general, the scene? Because you guys already have, like, a, a pretty good crop of talent with James Gallagher, you know, MVP, Paul Daly, uh, you name it, Liam McGeary. There's, there's tons of guys from that area. You know, like, if you watch a fight from Newcastle last week, you saw some real good talent. You know, the Scope kid is yeah. – he proved he could fight anybody. That fight was very close. And then people, you know, kind of harp on Chalmers because he's the, you know, the – but the kid can fight. 
yeah. he's got heart. And you know what? The more he trains, the better he gets. I'm telling you, he's going to start delivering some, you know, some big fights. And I think he was already in a fight that, you know, he could have won that fight. He hit him with a left hook. He thought he was in a boxing fight. Kickbox turns around and still, he should have went down. And, and that's the difference between MMA and kickboxing or boxing. So he made a little mistakes here and there. But man, that kid, one thing, I seen him get dropped and come back and win fights in a big fashion. He has tremendous heart. Uh, and then all, the, all in all, we, like you said, with Gallagher and, you know, not, not just the guys that have been around for a while, but I'm talking about the new crop that I see over there uh, is really inspiring because there's some talent. And that's why we started this whole venture over there was because, yeah. you know, Viacom said we want you to expand. So I said, okay, where's the talent pool? And the talent pool is in the UK and in Ireland and, you know, different parts of Europe are just starting, but UK has had MMA there for many years now. So they, uh, they have some real good talent, and we're going to go extract them and put them on uh, Sky Sports or put them on Channel 5. Very exciting. Um, now let's switch gears for a second. Moving to the heavyweight division, the Bellator Heavyweight Grand Prix wrapped up. Um, Ryan Bader became double champ, uh, be defeating Fedor Emelianenko. I'm just curious, since you guys plan on doing more uh, Grand Prix, um, what did you learn from the heavyweight Grand Prix that you're going to take on uh, to different Grand Prix, to different tournaments? You know, I'll tell you, you have to knock on wood because usually an injury happens or something gets pushed back or, you know, like something, something happens, a date you can't get the date, you can't get the TV. So... Nobody got hurt. The tournament kind of unfolded, you know, within a one-year period, which is exactly what we want. Same thing with the welterweight tournament. Um, and it's, it's kind of sometimes you get lucky in the situation because, yeah. you know, nobody got hurt. In the welterweight tournament, it's the same thing, you know. But, uh, you know, the, the tournament format, everybody understands. I love the tournament format because that's how I grew up doing martial arts. And, you know, when I was working for K1, I loved watching the, the Grand Prix unfold, you know, and then uh, at the end of the year they had the big, you know, event. And so, you know, single elimination events uh, make a lot of sense for us. So what, what I learned is that uh, we should always have a tournament at some point in the year. Like we should run, Beltor will run run tournament in one win class per year. Okay. We don't want to do th two or three or four different tournaments and, you know, and we uh, will throw tournaments when we have uh, – eight fighters that are brand names already, that people already know that we can put together. And that's been the formula. So it's worked and we're gonna continue doing it. Any concerns with uh, Ryan Bader being, you know, champ champ, you know, you have one guy defending two belts rather than two guys defending two belts, which, you know, could ultimately, you know, it, it'd be more defenses for Ryan Bader. Any any issues with that? You know, I haven't sat down and talked to him, but uh, it's really up to him, you know, I mean, can he, you know, is he going to be so heavy he can't make 205 if he's fighting at heavyweight? That's something we'll have to ask him and talk to him. But, um, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted him to really just go enjoy and take the time out the family. Because one thing about this tournament is that, you know, this is what Fedor said to me when, when he came off, you know, when, when I saw him uh, the week of the fight. He said, you know, my body is really tired. I've been training all year long. Right when usually he's had two fights or you know, like he said, I've been training in a training camp all year long. So my, so if he's saying that, I'm sure that the other fighters, you know, even if they're you know, let's say younger or, I'm sure your body's still tired, right? They're still tired, and so these guys have been in training camp all year long. So if Ryan wants to have you know, three fights next year, then you know he should map out which ones are going to be heavy and then which ones light heavyweight, and then you know he'll, you know, if we get balled up at light heavy, then we'll make a business decision with him. And, and talk about it, but uh, or at headweight if we get bottled up somewhere, right. you know. And, and I think eventually it's possible, but you know what? Let him enjoy it and uh, take all the accolades, and and uh, you know he looked good having those three belts around him yeah. uh, that night. Let him enjoy it, and then we'll talk to him uh, in a couple weeks. Yeah. And um, just quickly, uh, Minikov, Czech Congo, that's number one contender, right? The winner there yes. will get the next crack at the heavyweight champ. Yes, that's correct. And um, so you're doing, you did heavyweight tournament, now you're working on welterweight tournament. Uh, any other tournaments planned? Any other, any other weight classes? You know, there's a lot of dialogue about uh, different weight classes. We haven't, you know, 100% said which division, but I believe that come October, we will probably uh, roll out a new tournament in a different weight class. You know, we've talked, talked about the pros and cons about different weight classes, um, but um, I think that... Um, you know, I, I mean, I'll just say it, the, the one that sounds the most attractive to me is the featherweight division, right? Because you have the pit bulls and you have, you know, the A.J. McKees and you have and Gallagher could come up. J D.C. Darren, Darren Caldwell could come up and uh, Pico's in that weight class. 
I still think he's a great fighter. Corrales, Sanchez. I mean, we just have so many great fighters in that featherweight division that it just makes a lot of sense. And um, I, I would ha I'm, I'm going to have to ask you this or else I wouldn't do my job. Uh, Vanderlei Silva recently said to a Brazilian media outlet that he was having like concussion-like symptoms, uh, which included, you know, forgetting stuff, uh, mood swings, lack of sleep, etc. Um, is there any concern? He's still an active fighter. He hasn't retired, and you know, he is under Bellator contract. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, our our objective is fighter safety first, and we're not going to put him in a situation where he's if he's injured or he has concussion issues. We're not going to put him in the ring or put him in the cage again, uh, that just doesn't make sense. That's just not how we operate. So I think that um, if Vanderlei does want to come back, he's got to get a complete, you know, clearance from, you know, the, uh, the, the and I think it's the, the Cleveland, yeah, yeah the, the Cleveland, the Cleveland Clinic maybe. We, we send him there, do some tests, and, and make sure he's all right. Because, listen, I, I'm a fan of Vanderlei Silva. He's already done everything that he needs to do. He's already accomplished, it, you know, what else can he do? He was, he's been, he's a legend. So to me, he doesn't need to fight anymore to keep his legacy going. He fights because he wants to fight. But if he has serious, you know, issues, then you know he should take care of that because that's 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 forever, and that's something that you know we can't support. Yeah. Uh, and, and lastly, um, your Twitter game has been quite impressive lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you stepped it up. Um, why why so involved in in social media now? Oh, you know, I mean, that's the future. Let's face yeah. it. You know, it's like, and why not have fun with it? Yeah. Right. I mean, to me, it's like I'm just having fun, and and uh, and, it, and it's just so funny to see the responses of some people. Right. Look, it's getting good engagement. I'm having fun with it. And I'm going to keep doing it until it's not fun anymore. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.